everybody. How's it going? I am your host, Adrian, coming to you almost live from lovely Petaluma, California, here in Studio MC3 at Quicksurf Internet Studios. The Geekinator is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Do feel free to head on over uh, uh, to techpodcast.com and check out all the other technology-related shows over there as well. I'd like to encourage everybody to visit us online over at quicksurf.com. Please uh, show your support for the show by subscribing. Um, the sh show notes for each and every episode has a link to subscribe to a variety of formats, be it MP3, Og Vorbis, uh, video. Uh, if you're watching on blip.tv or YouTube, uh, there's a subscribe link also right below the video, or there should be. And uh, with that, let's go ahead and get into some of the cool stuff I found for this episode. Uh, this week is kind of an interesting week. Um, simply because Google I.O. has been going on this week. And so there's, there's a lot of Google-related news that we're going to talk about, and it's all going to be kind of in one, uh, uh, one story for Mashable. Uh, Mashable did a really great job of covering Google I.O. The first thing uh, is Android L. So there's kind of a ditching of uh, their dessert theme for naming Android. The latest version of Android, simply called Android L, will roll, roll out to users this fall. Um, if you're a developer, you can get a preview version of it right now. Uh, one of L's biggest features is the platform's new design language, Material Design, which will run across Android phones and tablets, Chrome OS, smartwatches, and the web. That's a lot to digest, but essentially, uh, I, it looks a little bit like they're kind of doing the Apple thing. Remember when Apple uh, at the Worldwide Developers Conference announced uh, the Swift, the new langu language Swift, and you know made you know, a bunch of stuff a whole lot easier and this and that. Well, it looks like uh, Google may be kind of going down the same thing, and it's a lot of ground that they're covering here, if you'll notice. Uh, which will run, it says, which will run across Android phones and tablets, Chrome OS, smartwatches, and the web. What? Yeah, you read that right. I read that right. I, I can't believe it. So, a uh, lot of performance enhancements. Um, they're promising to bring PC like gaming to phones and tablets and new controls to optimize battery life. That's one of Android's biggest problems right now, is their uh, multi threading model and their process control model really sucks the battery life out of Android phones. There are some applications that will just kill your battery. Um, that's one area that Apple with iOS does a significantly better job. Um, notifications also got a much needed overhaul. Users are gonna be able to read and dismiss notifications directly from their device's lock screen, which is huge, something Apple's uh, been doing for a while now. Uh, speaking of the lock screen, you can also uh, integrate with Android Wear powered smartwatches, smart which we'll talk about Android Wear here in a couple of minutes, to authenticate your identity. So if you're wearing a smartwatch running Android Wear, you won't need to enter your PIN to unlock your phone. Kind of cool-ish. I'm wondering how it's gonna work. Um, they uh, also announced a new initiative, Android One. It's aimed at bringing high quality, affordable devices to developing countries like India. Now, in addition to Android L, they also announced Android Wear, and it's basically Google's platform for smartwatches and other wearables, and it will integrate with Android L and Android TV. Android TV, we'll talk about that in a minute. When downloading a new app to your phone, Android Wear, the Android Wear version of the app will automatically download onto your device. Subsequent app updates will also automatically be downloaded Pretty interesting. Uh, notifications are designed to display only the most relevant and important information at any given moment on your wearable device, um, as well as contextual alerts from Google Now. So um, I I'm curious to see how, oh boy, I'm curious to see how the Android Wear thing is going to uh, kind of come out in the wash. Um, yeah, I'm curious to see how it's going to work. Should be pretty interesting. Um, before we talk about Android TV, Android Auto. I mean, this is they, they are made, making Google is making some major serious moves into new markets here. Uh, they've uh, finally brought Android to the car with Android Auto. 
Um, it's the connected car platform, not unlike Apple's CarPlay, which Apple has been doing for quite some time now. Um, it's completely voice enabled. It allows you to cast navigation, communication, and music apps from your phone to your car's dashboard. Uh, voice commands enabled by Google Now allow you to send and receive text messages, get directions, and make phone calls with only voice commands. Pretty cool. Siri's already kind of doing that for me. So, I'm, I'm again, this is one of those things where I'm somewhat wondering how this is going to work in reality and how well it's going to work in reality. Um, they're starting off, they have more than 40 partners for the system via its Open Automotive Alliance. So, uh, pretty interesting. Now, let's get into Android TV. They unveiled Android TV. It's a, again, this is one of those things I'm curious to see how this is really going to work in real life because Google TV, for all of those of you who remember, I was really underwhelmed. Uh, Android TV, it combines live TV, Android apps, and Google Play services. And this is, again, I'm uh, curious to see how this is going to roll out and work. Um, Good example of this, uh, there's an emphasis on easy searching and support voice enabled searching. So you can be controlled, you can search uh, via your Android Wear powered smartwatch. Um, Android TV also supports Google Cast, meaning it will function much like a Chromecast, which again, I'm really underwhelmed with Chromecast. Um, it allows you to cast content from your phone or tablet to your set. Uh, Google also announced a few major improvements to its stream dongle, the Chromecast. Um, should be pretty interesting. Again, this is one of those things where they've already tried this once. Personally, I was really underwhelmed uh, with their first attempt. Hopefully, they've taken some learnings um, and and uh, and are are gonna. You know, hopefully they're they're taking some learnings away from it, and we'll see something much much more improved. So we'll see. Um, they're partnering with Sony and Sharp to develop the Android TV supported sets, and Razer and ASUS to make the gaming specific set top boxes. So again, kind of also kind of getting into the Amazon uh, Fire TV territory. I, I've spoke previously about this. I have an Amazon Fire TV. Should be pretty interesting. Chromebooks, they are pushing to bring Chrome OS and Android closer together to create a more unified experience between the two platforms, a la Apple with, you know, iOS 8 and uh, OS 10 uh, Yosemite that's going to be coming out in the not too distant future, um, or, or even Mavericks. There's, you know, I mean, there've, there's been a fair amount of Apple uh, doing exactly what Google just announced. Uh, so should be pretty interesting. Google Fit. Google also announced uh, Google Fit. It's a new platform for tracking health and fitness information, a la Apple's Health Kit. Uh, the platform will be open to, develop, to developers and an SDK will be made available in the coming weeks. Again, you know, kind of grep in Apple's uh, uh, playbook here, but uh, at the same time, it's, it's refreshing to see them do it because that means Apple will actually have some competition. And we all know that competition kind of drives what makes a lot of this stuff better. So it uh, should be pretty interesting. Um, I'm curious to see how all of this is going to shake out. Like I said, this is huge Google news. They're making, you know, pretty significant uh, moves into several different markets. So should be interesting to see how it all plays out. All right. From um, GameSpot, you can now watch YouTube videos in 60 frames per second, starting with Battlefield Titanfall. So YouTube is adding support for a few, few more frame rates, um, 48 and 60 frames per second. Kind of interesting. So, so they support, uh, if I remember correctly, 24, 23.976, 24, 25, and uh, 30 frames a second. They're adding support for 48 and 60 frames per second. Um, so for those of you who like to record your, um, for those of you who like to record your, your, your video game play, you know, via a, an HDMI capture device or something of that nature, 
this will 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 allow you to, to actually capture it at 1080p 60 because that's typically what you're outputting and upload that to YouTube, no modifications necessary. So pretty cool. Um, I'm curious to see, again, uh, lately, bandwidth-wise, YouTube has been really sucking. So um, curious to see. This is only going to mean bandwidth at a minimum for those particular videos is going to have to be double to even maintain the same video quality. So should be interesting. From the Washington Street Journal, AT&T is expanding its 4G LTE coverage to more than 100 sites in uh, Mississippi. Um, as part of its continuing network investment and ongoing 4G LTE rollout, AT&T has upgraded more than 100 mobile internet cell sites throughout Mississippi to expand the 4G LTE coverage for residents, businesses, and travelers. Among the Mississippi counties that received multiple upgrades from January through May include, uh, they've got a list, I'm not going to go through it. Um, if you want to know, if you're in Mississippi and you want to know uh, if you are included on this, definitely check it out. So uh, from, the next story we have is from uh, a, a local site here. It's CBS's uh, 5K Picks SF Bay Area. Uh, Facebook is disbanding its Android home team. Um, kind of interesting. Facebook appears to be giving up on the one avenue to dominate your phone. The New York Times reports the company is disbanding the team working on its Facebook home software. If you're not familiar with it, Facebook home is basically a Facebook-dominated phone. They created a version of Facebook deeply embedded in the HTC First phone. Uh, so that every time you turned on your phone, you'd automatically get status updates. Frankly, Facebook's not that important in my life. And I, I have most notifications from most social websites turned completely off. And I get notifications of their updates when I actually go open the app and look at, <laughs> look at it from there. You know, my Facebook app does not notify me or put any badges up or anything. I don't see any new activity until I actually go look at my Facebook app. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry for sneezing there in your ear. Um, and that's that way for Twitter, Pinterest, uh, what else do I have? Um, Instagram, Flickr, all of my social uh, networking sharing sites, I, I just, I don't, I don't want notifications. So anyway, um, Again, it was a phone that didn't really sell that well to begin with. Uh, from azstarnet.com, this is actually down in Tucson, Arizona Daily Star. Uh, the space station astronauts are getting, dun, 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 why am I even reporting on this? An espresso machine. Talk about a cosmic caffeine jolt. The International Space Station is getting a real Italian espresso machine. Astronauts of all nationalities, but especially, now I have this giant photo. Uh, astronauts of all nationalities, but especially the Italians have long grumbled about the tepid instant coffee served in pouches and drunk with straws 260 miles above Earth. Pouches and straws aren't going away, but at least the brew will pack some zero gravity punch. The specially designed for space espresso machine is dubbed ISS Presso, ISS for International Space Station. Uh, its launch early next year from Wallops Island, Virginia, is time to coincide with the six month mission of Italy's first female astronaut, Samantha Cristoforetti. So, pretty interesting. Should be pretty interesting. I'm curious now. I'm curious what space coffee tastes like. I need to see if I can find some of that and buy it. Note to self, find some space coffee and buy it and then try it. Uh, from Times of India, NASA's Orion clears a tough parachute test. So NASA's human space flight program crossed an important Milestone on Wednesday when it completed the most complex and flight-like test of the parachute system for the agency's Orion spacecraft, which will fly astronauts to the moon, asteroids, and Mars, according to NASA. The test version of Orion touched down safely in the Arizona desert after being pulled out of a C-17 aircraft 35,000 feet 
above the U.S. Army's Yuma Proving Ground. It was the first time parachutes in the system had been tested at such a high altitude. Engineers put additional stresses on the parachutes by allowing the test version of Orion to free fall for 10 seconds, which increased the vehicle's speed and aerodynamic pressure. So pretty cool. Again, this is, you know, all good stuff. It's stuff that they have to do. That will do it for this edition of the Geekinator. As always, everything we've talked about is linked up in the show notes, which you can find online over at quickshift.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you haven't already done so. For those of you who have, thank you for showing your support for the show. And with that, I will see all of you on the next episode. See you then. Bye. Bye.